I can feel it in my bones. It's probably going to be terrible because bones feel... What the, what the fuck do bones know about coaching? Anyway, welcome to Overwatch and welcome to another episode of Coaching the Mini. Today we're going to be talking all about Soldier 76. We're going to be talking about prioritization. We're going to be talking about space. About space. Uh, you have to say space with a long A since Portal 2 came out. Or pigs in space, actually. Someone mentioned that in the chat and like, Jesus, that took me back. Old, very old Muppet skit. Anyway... So then, uh, I've also just seen Ant-Man cut off five inches on my hair, now I'm constantly cold. Cry me a bloody river. Okay, <laughs> cry me a river. Why do you think I'll wear the hat? Uh, anyway, right, Soldier 76, very, very important hero. Uh, always pretty much relevant, always pretty good to learn. Sometimes McCree's going to be better than him in sort of the grand scheme of things. Sometimes McCree will do the hit scan roll a bit better than Soldier. Sometimes people will do the... Um, Sometimes Soldier will do it better than McCree, and so those two are kind of kind of always jockey back and forth. But Soldier, always all right to learn, always pretty good. Maybe not optimal at the highest levels, but generally he's going to be okay. He's very much designed to be the intro hero. You can play him in a lot of different positions, a lot of different places. You can do a lot of different things with him. And as such, he often is sort of spinning many, many plates with in terms of deciding what you're going to do with him. This was a really good example of a game where um, trying to do too much at once punishes the player. And yeah, you can see Zeta is in chat. He, say, he says nice. There you go. Our hero today is I see people. Uh, so he sees people, apparently. Uh, and accompanying this game was a lovely email that I'm going to now sort of go over. So the, the key thing about this game, like watching it is very, very apparent as you start looking and seeing what's sort of going on. Uh, I was facing a, par a Farah pocketed by Mercy throughout the whole match in combination with a Tracer that I also had to shut down. And already my brain went, okay, like, that's already going to be super, super difficult, right? And we've talked about this sort of in the past of trying to split um, down, like, the team roles and trying to figure out, okay, well, you can do this, I can do this, you can do this, and sort of sorting it out from there. So, like, if we just take this team lineup instantaneously and take that email and sort of look at it, okay, well, what's going to deal with the pharmacy? Well, none of these guys can deal with pharmacy. Like, none of them are ever going to be able to do anything with that. Even if, like, one of these changed, chances are nothing else here is going to ever deal with pharmacy. Right, the, this is the timeout box. This is the pharmacy solution. Like, this is the only thing that's really going to keep them back. This can deal with Tracer, this can deal with Tracer, this can deal with Tracer. That can't really deal with Tracer, but that can deal with everything else. Like, okay, fair enough. I think one or two of these might change, if I remember right. Um... And so, like, the, the email goes on explaining, I think it was even harder, because it seemed like no one on the team even tried to shoot the Farah, or her mercy and belly even touched the trace. I felt like as a responsibility to shut down all three of them was completely on me. I felt like I did a pretty good job of doing so, however, I think it was too much for me to handle. I haven't used my ultimate ability just sometimes to shut the Farah mercy down, because really, I didn't have anything better to do with it. It was a very bloody match. Okay. And so, like, already... What I want to outline this with is don't try and do everything at once because you're going to see, and this is sort of the really nice context stuff, is every time we peel off to go and deal with the Tracer, you're going to see the Pharmacy come in further and further and further and take more and more and more space. They're going to take over more and more and more ground. And as such, it's going to be difficult to deal with that sort of encroaching further and further forward because it's just going to start killing everything. Like Junkrat, it's pretty strong at the moment. Um... Especially like first point Eichenwald, that's actually a pretty good spot for him because there's only two choke points he has to really defend. Our Reinhardt's pretty positioned pretty far back. Not too happy about where he is at the moment. Honestly, I'd rather him be closer to the choke. Just general rule of thumb. Uh, just so the Junkrat can honestly get more done. And then the rest of these guys can sort of fluidly move around. We have a Symmetra. It's okay. It's fair enough. First point Eichenwald works fine. And then the Lucio is mono support. Eh, it's fair enough. It can work. And so we instantly peel off to go and deal with this Tracer, and so does the Lucio. Like, I don't like the fact that the Lucio does this as well. And honestly, like, if you are running a defensive Genji, this is, like, Genji and Symmetra are perfect for dealing with stuff like this. But the Tracer cannot just stay around if the Symmetra just peels off. So when this Tracer goes through, it's also much harder for the Tracer to go through, by the way, if you stand closer. Tracer gets in, and because we've peeled away, uh, the Reinhardt's now peeled back as well, and suddenly the rest of the enemy team, now they have complete free access to the choke. Like, the entire team just pulled back just for one tracer, just for this filthy casual, apparently. Uh, thank you, Redat. Redat3108. Thank you so much. Uh, and yeah, you see that that team just like waltzes right in, and suddenly now we're playing completely from the point. We don't really get a chance to use that choke point area. Which is a bit of a shame. Luckily, the Mercy gets into a bad position. Symmetra just kills absolutely everyone. Hey! We now probably have a teleporter, which feels pretty good, man. 
and we can clean up. So luckily the enemy team made the fatal error of just running straight into the Symmetra. Uh, the the big thing I want to highlight is A, the enemy team fucked up here. Like, in my mind, the enemy team just needed to slow it down a bit, get into a good position, clear the choke, and then just take it step by step. But the big thing I want to highlight actually is if we get a good view of it, like the moose the the motion the motion that we do gives away and seeds all of this space here. All of this space suddenly is gone because the Reinhardt pulls back as well. And honestly, we don't really need to deal with the Tracer. If you have a Symmetra, Symmetra is great for dealing with Tracers. Uh, she just makes it very difficult for the Tracer to do anything. Genji, he's okay at dealing with Tracers. He can go and hunt her down. He can go and find her. Um, so, yeah, we cover the Symmetra. Even the Lucio can kind of annoy it. Enemy team just piles on top of your team for no good reason. Instead of just like, no one helps Roadog through the choke point either. So I think he just got stuck there by six turrets and couldn't move. It was pretty bad, man. And yeah. Ugh. Like, I like standing here. Like, standing here is fine. Standing here is great for Soldier 76, because it does give you, like, easy line of sight to, to sort of all the pathways that you need line of sight to. It's when you move out of this that suddenly this entire area is so much weaker. So, so much weaker. I also wanted to highlight Junkrat as well. Yeah, Junkrat's okay for dealing with Tracer now, especially with the double pulse, uh, the double sticky grenades. Why not ask for healing from you? It's fair enough, they're going to play around you because that's just where the extra healing is because you've got a Lucio mono healing at the moment. And hey, there's a Farah. The second this Farah appears, this is when we have to sort of reassess our priorities and this Farah is our job. Uh, this Farah is absolutely our job. This is also when I noticed the, um, the crosshair. Cruz uses exactly the same crosshair and it drives me insane. I don't like it much. If I go back a couple of frames, you can see this crosshair is basically, it's like a, a circle that's kept tiny and then it has the aim bloom. So it gets bigger as you fire. But what I see, like, I don't know. I To me, I like a crosshair that tells me where the middle of my screen is at all times in a very, 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 very clear way. So I'm not the biggest fan of that. It's a juicy rocket. And again, you notice we're giving up all this space. And now, that especially that we we're pulling back to deal with this tracer, you can imagine like the Farah is, is just licking her chops at the moment. She's going crazy on the front line. And you can see the pharmacy has I already just crept all show. the way up over here. Uh, thank you, Paul Denton 668. Welcome. Welcome to the many. Uh, good use of that September, if you aren't aware. This, uh, I've, got, I've got to do the sellout. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. But it, it is September as well. So if it is your first sub, um, or you haven't subbed in like the last 32 days, then it's half price, which is... Pretty cool, and it counts as full price for me. Uh, yeah, this is just us not like realizing that our team can kind of deal with Tracer. And we have this weird division of labor at the moment where it's like you're chasing after the Tracer, but meanwhile these three guys out here are like all they're doing at the moment I think is just dodging the pharmacy and trying not to die to these rockets coming in above. While we're trying to hunt down the Tracer, getting into Zarya's face for some reason, instead of just realizing that, you know, our... Our division of labor has to be split so that, you know, sod the Tracer. Let the Tracer go into the back line, tell Genji he needs to deal with that. This is very fortunate. This is, like, very, very lucky. Like, this is almost like a scripted moment. I can imagine, you know, someone in the Overwatch HQ of, like, hmm, we need to Welcome release a video that demonstrates... Hey, there we go. Cliff Terry <laughs> with a new sub as well. Thank you so much, my man. Welcome to the many. Um... But I can imagine someone in the Overwatch HQ going, hmm, we need a video to demonstrate what Symmetra brings. So, how do, how do we do that? We'll release a video in... You know, pretend that we didn't actually use the attack visor in this video because it has to be like hype as hell. It's like, oh, you died, but you, you have a crucial ultimate to come back and turn the fight. Luckily, you have Symmetra on your team, and Symmetra deploys the teleporter, and now the teleporter is up. Soldier 76 comes barreling through it, deploys the tactical visor, and kills everyone. Unfortunately, that's not what happens, but he does chase away a Farah, trying to hunt him down. And you can see the pharmacy is just staying pretty up here. We just take a juicy headshot. I think that's from a McCree, not a Widowmaker. From a widow, that's scary. It might be a widow, actually. It's a pretty juicy headshot, anyway. That's actually kind of terrifying for us because now, like, now we have a really big division of labor where it's like Genji has to deal with that widow, if that is a widow. Um, Junkrat has to deal with the tracer, we have to deal with pharmacy. And one person dealing with pharmacy alone isn't going to really be enough, so we're more trying to scare the pharmacy off and put pressure on it. Like the, the idea is that pharmacy shouldn't have free access. That is a Widowmaker, yep. Uh, so that's always going to be a problem for us. So we're going to have to play around the Reinhardt just for, you know, safety. Meanwhile, it's really Junkrat that should be doing stuff like this, flushing out the, the Tracer. This is just unfortunate, where it's like their entire team is just back here. We blow ourselves up. Tracer puts a bomb on the teleporter. Teleporter goes down. That's Tracer doing a job. 
Would have 60 health use McCree headshot? Not necessarily, at that distance. Because uh, of the damage drop off. Uh, as you can see, like, the enemy team now have complete control pretty much of all the, the space around the point, and now that they've got the teleporter, they must be feeling pretty happy. I imagine they're kind of annoyed that, at the Widowmaker pick. Um, but if G gets a kill, this is just going to be blown wide open for their team. Tracer being irritating, again, like, leave that to Junkrat. We Leave that to Junkrat, leave that to Symmetra. Symmetra's actually run off to go and deal with the Widow. Uh, Widow versus Symmetra is actually a really interesting one. Like, as someone who plays a lot of Widow in FFA, um, and a little bit in rank now, like, Symmetra can be a real annoyance because what she does is she just throws the barrier at you, runs up behind it, and you, you have to reposition, and if you don't, that's what ends up happening. But, like, it's a good rocket, but this is where we really just need to leave this to other people because the pharmacy, while we're in here, while we're busy chasing this tracer around, pharmacy is going to just run right up and get into a good position to do stuff like this. And that's a huge problem because now, well, they've just got Wombo Combo. Helping the Genji get the kill, though. Pretty good. It's looking good. Looking optimistic. Spoiler alert, it doesn't end uh, on first point. It's good healing. Like, good awareness that, they're, hey, we, we need to provide that healing. <laughs> good attempt with a rocket as well. That would have been beautiful if it landed. We're in a really good position with the ultimate. The big thing I would be scared of right now is Widowmaker. Because uh, Widowmaker could just put us out of action. Really want to make sure we use that ultimate to shut down the pharmacy. Try and kill Mercy first. But if Farah does make herself too vulnerable. Like she gets too far away from that cover. That central pillar. Do not be afraid to activate it and shut it down. It's a bit unfortunate. This is why I it might have been a little bit happier just playing more with the Reinhardt. Because this is what pharmacy can do. If they do just get you isolated, like this is, remember when we did coaching the menu fire, we were talking a lot about target priority. Well, this fire's target priority is absolutely correct in spotting, hey, there's a Soldier 76 there. Um, I'm just going to throw two missiles at him before he can kill me, and that's it. Do we just stick on the kill cam? Damage boosted rocket. Follow up rocket. Easy. So much as teleporter faces the wrong way. We used our visor. We have nothing left. And we got the we got the fire, but looking at the kill feed, it's not looking good. Tracer's got the teleporter again as well. This is sort of Tracer being real good. XD Tracer. But there's very few better uses for Pulse Bomb than killing teleporters and shield gens, trust me. Tracer's absolutely doing her job there. That Symmetra needed to swap badly. Symmetra on second point, not very good. Not very useful, especially if the enemy team is running Pharmacy. They were running a Doomfist as well. Symmetra actually does screw Doomfist over a little bit. Like, it's it's difficult to um, for the Symmetra to engage the Doomfist directly, but it's very, very difficult for the Doomfist to engage into anywhere Symmetra is set up. Drop some healing for this guy. Hopefully he uses it. Hello, Doomfist. Whiffs his abilities. Easy kill. We have a Farah of our own, we have a McCree. Okay, let's start thinking about the division of labor again. Well, the, the Farah can help us deal with the pharmacy, uh, but she's going to need more help than what we can just provide. The McCree can help deal with the Tracer and the Doomfist. It's a good punch from Doomfist. Pity for him that it didn't like hit us into the wall, but there you go. Make sure that we're being active. Good, good, good. Let's try and set up to contest... Well, let's set up to get rid of this again. I'm going to have to run, because she's got us so pretty much zeroed in. Tracer gets us in the back. Feels pretty bad, man. Symmetra, I don't think has had a chance to really get out of spawn properly and get set up. This is even more signs. Hey, Symmetra! Maybe it's time to change. Maybe it's time to, to pick up uh, a Zen. I'm okay with the sights here. Mercy does the smart thing and drops down. Sandberry gets used to counter you, but you get the Mercy regardless. Pretty good. Almost get the Fire as well. Anything really better we could have done with that? Actually, that goes down. Like That's a scary part of this. But we do have a good opportunity to get the kill here. Did we stop firing for a second there? No, we didn't. Good. I'm killing the Mercy. Highest prior. Probably has res. Worth, but the enemy team's just getting better results. Your team now has an Anna and a Symmetra. Still have the Symmetra. Symmetra on third point's not too bad. Luckily for the Symmetra. Um, they now have a Widowmaker as well. It's a good sleep dart. I'd say we're more installing mode here, so I would recommend, like, instead of just trying to get kills, because you're never going to kill all of these people, you're more just trying to buy time for more of your team to come back out. Like, I would dump the rocket and then focus on just, like, jumping up the payload, sprinting around it. Soldier is very, very evasive when he wants to be. Like, Soldier is extremely slippy. There's, like, the Soldier shuffle, where you're, like, sprinting and, and dodging and bouncing all over the place. It's very difficult to deal with. Okay, we have a Zen Yada. Let's go, boys. We've got the Zen.
Oh, and someone in chat shouting at the Symmetra. There's, there's no need for, like, name calling. This is the thing. It's like, hey, Symmetra, can you please swap? Or, hey, Symmetra, you fucking suck, man. You're making us lose the game. Which one's going to get results? Which one's going to tilt your team? Okay, playing Death Ball style at the moment, just going to set up Brian Shell as much damage as you can, keep an eye out for threats. Luckily, the enemy team's comp is going to start getting weaker at this point. Um, so basically, you're going to see them drop off pretty heavily because, like, Widowmaker is worse in here, Pharmacy is technically worse in here. Um, it's just because, like, the amount of space, the amount of angles available to you is more limited. So the Reinhardt, or the Winston in this case now, is going to occupy more space. A Diva would have also been superb um, at this point. Borrow trades for Widow. I wouldn't say that's really worth it at the moment. Let's just focus our efforts on keeping that Farah pin back. So yeah, when you see, like, in instances like this, it is our job at this point to just shell Farah. Like, the hammer down comes through. Honestly, actually, we could probably finish this Reinhardt, but unfortunately, I think he gets healed up. But in most cases, we want to be shooting at the Farah, just making it hard for Farah to get anything done without her Mercy babysitting. So that means that we're pulling all of Mercy's attention in a specific direction. But at this point, uh, the enemy team is just snowballing. They're getting better ultimates. They're getting better resource management because your team swapped constantly, so you don't really have any resources to use. Um, your supports have been swapping nonstop, so you have never really seen a support ultimate so far. Let's just put a rocket into that. Thank you. Sights goes off. Trying to set up in a good position. I'd be careful about getting too far away from the point here, just as a rule of thumb, because that is how C9s are made. Um, but I, what I, I will be tempted not to get any further than this pillar. Just in case you start seeing people dying, you can get back super quickly and super easily. Just to like, that's just me being very, very careful, though. Don't get me wrong, Soldier 76, like, once you see that four people are up and sort of around the point, then it's okay to sort of be further back because Soldier 76 is very strong in these positions where you just can sort of shell away and no one's really paying attention to you. This Doomfist actually needed to go and deal with you. Um, otherwise, there's no way that they're taking this because you're just going to stand there and kill everything. And I'd just be very, very careful in, like, in moments like this, what I would be more tempted to do is deploying the sights and then getting on top of the payload just to sort of clear everything that's on the payload off and then you can move out a little bit more. Very, very hard for like a Tracer and a Lucia to dance around the payload in a way that you won't be able to just kill them. Oh, once you see that these four guys are up. Okay, just keep an eye on the Winston's health. It's the Winston's... The Winston should be the guy who's mostly staying on the payload. Um, that's more Winston's priority at the moment. I'd uh, just be very, very careful about, like, abandoning points because it happens all the time where people just do that. We're fine repositioning at the moment. Again, it's more the tanks, the Lucio, should really be staying by the point at this moment. So, yeah, we are fine repositioning here. This guy is a bitch. Um, just throwing that out there. This Zen mains Anna. Don't know why he doesn't play Anna. He's, he's playing something else. Report him, clearly. I'm going to whine. I'm going to be a crybabby. Don't be that crybabby. But this is a nice holding position for 76. I don't know why we're dropping down. Why, why, where are we going? Where, where, are, where are we off to? Why are we here? There's our prime target. I'm not entirely sure why we've ended up in this position. Just trying to see what we're, what we're doing with it. The overarching goal seems to be let's let Farah get up here and then engage us in a close range duel for some reason when she can just go and kill everyone else. Um, yeah, that that's kind of interesting. Looks like he heard something. Nothing but the, the whistling sound of Genji Shurikens. Now it used to be the Widowmaker. So that's not even the Tracer. And even if you do hear something, like... The problem with this movement is this. Right now, we have two sources of hitscan pressure sort of going out into all of this space. Like, all of this area here. This is now, like, danger for Farah. All of this area. 
She can't fly through here, basically. Because if she does, she's got McCree shooting at her, she's got soldiers shooting at her. So it makes it very, very difficult for the fire to actually get anything done and for any real space to be gained. So the Genji's yelling at us, but that, that's not a problem for us. Like, our healer's down there, so if you just stand a bit closer towards the edge, and if another set of hits lands, we just put down the healing field. Like, we're okay at the moment to just stand up here still and fight and shoot this barrier, and then wait for the Farah to appear. When we drop down here, now Farah can, you know, now it's just a McCree. McCree at long distance, not too big of a problem. Here we can do some work, but the problem with this position is there's no room to evade. Like, Farah's just going to slot rockets in through here, if she wants, and that's us done. We also have no high angle, so we're not shooting downwards anymore. We're pretty much on the level, so if she uh, tucks behind the Reinhardt, it's harder to find an angle on that as well. And especially when we're coming out here, like, ugh. Farah tucks behind the Reinhardt, jumps up and over. We got to move to counter. Start fighting. Be very careful about standing in any kind of just corridor shape. And Mercy, for some reason, decides to come up here. Kind of interesting. Two people are now failing to kill Farah, which makes me sad. Farah's on her own to the left. Again, this is your problem to deal with. Just keep an eye out for that. Like, there's a prime opportunity there. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look, look. This is, this is your kill. This is your job. And this comes from, like, that, just that simple breakdown of, okay, my team cannot deal with this threat, so I need to be, the, I have to be the one to deal with this. And if everyone's getting killed by the Tracer, you go, well, I'm trying to keep the Farah back. If I turn and focus on the Tracer, nothing's going to stop this Farah. So it has to be someone else. Like, you've, you've just got to learn to accept that your job now is to, to babysit or to... to to helm this fire, to make this fire's life hell, because if you don't, she's just going to shit all over your team, because no one else is going to be able to stop it. Um, you get a little bit lucky in the fact that, like, um, the McCree sort of swapped as well to help out with that, to provide additional assistance, so now it's like you and McCree are both dealing with Tracer and Fire, or McCree's at least creating an exclusion zone where Tracer's a bit scared to go, so it's creating some additional pressure, at the very least. Riava, can you Anna please for Nano Baldi? The good old Nano Baldi. I love the Nano Baldi. Tanks, my dude. TNX, my dude. <laughs> and then swaps to Mercy. <laughs> Lol, why? Uh, I, I love this team already. Question mark U. I think that's a U with an umlaut on top of it as well. Beautiful. Question mark. Anna is better. I, I love this team. Anna is shit. But what but what you want. But what you want. I I love it. I love the fact that can you play Anna so I have nanoblade? Oh me want nanoblade. Me love nanoblade. Okay, we've got a fire again. <laughs> Down goes Mercy. <laughs> Bless. Uh, before we begin, let's have a look at our team lineup. Do we actually get a good look at it? Okay, like, again, let's, let's go through this. So, single hit scan. Double support, flanker, double tank. What's going to be able to deal with a farer? You. Just you. Once you see that Farah, you know your, that is your destiny now. That is your job, that is your lot in life. You are going to have to shoot that Farah a whole lot. You probably won't be able to kill her on your own as well. You're probably going to have to ask for help at some point to deal with it. If it's a pharmacy, which it is. Um, feels pretty bad, man. The Reinhardt goes in, balls deep. I like this Reinhardt already. Unfortunately, two people are already dead. They've got a Hanzo as well. Spoiler, the Hanzo is not your job, the Farah is. Um, yeah, this, this is pretty feels bad, man. Let, let's just back up. Fight right, is done. I'd be careful. Like, this is the point. Okay. The, the, this, this is where you have to be ridiculously careful. Their team has a Hanzo and a Pharmacy. If you peek, 
You can take a 150 damage rocket. You can take a tracer's balls to your face. You can take a scatter arrow out of nowhere. You can take a regular arrow out of nowhere. Be very, very, very careful. I would recommend against, and like, <laughs> fucking hands of arrows. Come on, back, 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 back. There, there it is. There it is. Look at this. This is this is Hanzo, right? I don't know if you guys have seen the friggin' meme post. I think I still actually have it up. Uh, so I was browsing Imager before we began. So if I go... Scroll up, 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 There it is. Uh, gonna show this. Yeah, this is fine. Uh, when you're hands on, you don't get headshot for shooting someone in the soldier. Call him Blizz Tech Support. Right? Th this is a fucking hands arrow. Be scared. Be, be scared. Be afraid of that. Don't do stuff like this without your Rhine up because this is, or without any kind of tank in front of you, because this is, honestly, this is exactly how you end up in these situations where it's like, well, I just wanted to do a bit of damage and then Hanzo's bullshit arrow hit me. And then you go to do another push and then someone else dies and then someone else dies and then someone else dies. And it's how you end up in those exact places. Luckily, the new Mercy is going to help alleviate some of that and alleviate some of the frustration off the back of that. Um, so that's that to look forward to. I wanted to see what happens with these Reinhardts because something fascinating seems to have occurred where you come around this corner and it's like, oh, hello. You could definitely punish this Reinhardt. Good stuff. Heal up. It's a tracer here. Feels pretty bad, man. Your Mercy's dead. Honestly, you can still push forward. You've traded. The Pharah has managed to kill someone, unfortunately, because Genji went in on his own. Um, and this team lineup doesn't really play like that. It's a good rocket, but this is where I recommend taking it a bit slowly. Your reinforcement's going to come in a little bit faster. The objective now is just to make sure that you don't die and you get a couple more kills if you can. Or just maintain that pressure. So I'm fine with us pulling out here, actually. That's okay. New regroup, plugging away. Some good damage. You notice the pharmacy has to retreat. Okay, now we can turn and do damage on the Reinhardt. Wait for our tanks to come back. Be very, very careful again doing this sort of stuff. With this angle here, you are completely vulnerable to everything coming through and killing you. And especially standing in that doorway, it, all it takes is the pharmacy to get a, a little bit bold, go over the top, and manage to get onto you. Oh, okay, we kept the visor. So I was literally just thinking, okay, like, you might be able to get with a, away with a visor here. Like, right here, you might be able to do it. Here, you don't really need a visor at this point. Now, there's only one target, and especially when the tracer steps here, to me, like, I, all I was thinking when I saw this was right-click. Just right-click. Just right-click, just right-click, just right-click. Genji's probably hit a shuriken at some point. One right-click, this tracer's gone. Okay, Genji hasn't hit shit so far. It, it's a Genji. Um, you might get a left-click still. You're, at the very least, bare minimum, forcing a recall. She throws the bomb. Luckily, we don't finish our sentence, so doesn't matter. Barrage comes at the back. That's everyone dead. LOL. That's honestly good for the team. Like, you guys need to just regroup. They use two offensive ultimates. They haven't had to use any defensive ones so far, I think. Um, again, wait for your team. Or if you're going to stand anywhere, don't stand here. Stand, like, here. Or in spawn. If you're standing in the middle, like this area here, this space, if Farah pokes up and over, there's a chance that Farah can see you. And you just want to make sure that you are out of that line of sight and you are safe. Also, it makes it harder for anyone to just turn the corner. Like a Hanzo could just turn the corner, ping an arrow, and you're dead. And then that push is delayed another 10 seconds. So it's just a matter of like finding the places that are safest to stand and then just waiting patiently. Overwatch does have those moments where you just have to sort of stand and wait and grit your teeth. Team's going in aggressively. Okay, they've used the sound barrier. We are positioning. Might be a smidge early with that visor, but Mercy didn't get the sound barrier apparently, or was focused enough to get killed anyway. Reinhardt is dead. Bye, Reinhardt! Where's from your team? Out. The out to dragon. Okay. Mercy's dead, which is fine. Good rocket. What you needed to finish him off. If Lucio's are trying to do flashy movement, rockets are usually the good answer. Trace is going to come back in, so be ready for it. Shoot that Farah. Again, focus on the Farah. Just focus on that Farah. She's almost dead. She, got, she died. She got picked up again. You could honestly just go back to focusing on the Farah. I don't know why you're focusing on the Tracer. She's not actually the threat here. The Pharmacy remains the threat. It looks like Mercy's done it herself. I hope you feel thoroughly emasculated at this point. Because your support has had to kill a solo kill from the looks of things. A Farah on their own. That's your job. 
The job has been stolen by a medic. Luckily, you retaliated and killed their medic. The grab is good. Follow-up is fine. Okay. I love one of Mercy's kill lines, which I think is like, You better not tell your friends about that one. Mercy, you bitch. She knows. He knows. No, okay. Our, our target priority hasn't really changed. We're do gonna be doing most of our work on the fire. Like, making sure that she isn't doing stuff like that, where she's just floating out in the middle of the open, is gonna be our highest priority. Like, if she's able to get away with doing this, you guys are just gonna lose. Basically. They have a Widow. Luckily, your fire apparently is found and killed the Widow. That's pretty nice for you. Again, you're just causing problems for this fire. Notice that she's on the half hit points. She's so busy dealing with you that she isn't able to deal with anything else and you still win that fight. Like, that's sort of what you want out of this. Because you guys are now able to just... Sort of, now you're free to go and help with the Tracer. And now suddenly, it's like it's going to compact. Where, you know, you can imagine, like, if you have six, uh, six enemies, one... Two, three, four, five, six. And you have six allies. One, two, three, four, six. And they're all just fighting each other. Do, 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 do. And then one of them wins. Let's say you win, you kill an enemy. Then suddenly it's two versus one. And suddenly, do, three versus one. And suddenly it just starts compacting, right? Like the tracer has now got to deal with, now that the Farah is dead, now the tracer has to deal with you and Farah. And so it just gets incrementally higher. And if someone trades, it's still sort of okay because the numbers advantage is still in your favor. Um, so it's sort of just working down that checklist. Now, so yeah, now is a mercy happening. Oh, ah, uh, our reactions were a bit slow there. If you see someone do, if you see someone stood still like this, chances are extremely good that they are typing. You shouldn't try and reposition, do anything flashy. My best advice is if you see someone doing something like this, literally just fire a couple of headshots and rocket. Um, that's all you can do for just like stop, fire, rocket. Don't waste your time trying to get in closer because it's a Lucio. Uh, he's just got to right click. Spoiler alert: he notices, left clicks, bounces off. For some reason, it's staying on the high ground. What? The Lucio's name is Simple Fire. Simple Fire lives up to his name. He doesn't boop. He doesn't do anything. He literally just grinds in front of us. And yeah, the, what, what does Simple Fire expect is going to happen? The Widowmaker can't get out of spawn. Feels pretty bad, man. Pharmacy in the sky. I'd say a little bit early with that. Um, oh. Shutting down the pharmacy, like killing one aspect of the pharmacy is okay. 15 player kill streak feels pretty nice, man. The reason why I'd say it's a little bit early is when we activate it, we are not in a good position at the moment. Like, we are in a funnel getting shot at by the Farah, so we're going to be spending most of our time right now just trying to dodge the Farah. Um, and we have like two DPS that could just sort of barrel into us. This is not a good fight for us at the moment. Like, there's no way that we can out DPS all of this before it kills us. So the, the consolation is that they've got three people right now fighting us. And that state of affairs probably isn't going to last. Ideally, you might suspect that your team's going to come back and peel and do something like that. But you can see that, like, you can try and read the body language of your teammates. And this is very, very important as a skill. You can see that the pharmacy is focusing on something down this way. Like, they, they are gone. They're busy doing something else. They're prioritizing something over a different direction. So, yeah, there's... Like, this is not going to help you, and especially if Mercy takes a shitload of damage, like, not much is going to happen. Uh, something about the Biofield Advisor Animation Cancel, so the idea behind that, I believe, it's, it's something that I do, but I don't do it as like, I'm doing this technique, it's just something that I've always done, because I know that once I've deployed the visor, so once you deploy the visor, you can start shooting a little bit earlier, it's, you press Q, and then you press E, and you basically just, the uh, deploying the health sort of cancels out the animation of tapping your visor, and you can start shooting a little bit faster. Not huge, but it gets you. It basically gets you your visor activated, your health field down, and your gun firing that little bit quicker. And you usually want all three of those things at once. But this is sort of what I was talking about, where we have enough DPS to maybe kill one target, but the, the other one's are always going to finish us off. What could have gone better is the nice thing about tactical visor, we don't necessarily need to be in a super strong position to get a lot of value off it, so we could have just, instead of activating the visor here, what I might suggest is just giving it a little bit of time. Like, we've done a good amount of damage to the Farah. This is where we could honestly just be peeling off or peeling away from this high ground, dropping down behind our team, because if we just get behind the Reinhardt and press Q, Pharmacy can't do anything. And if they rocket up and try and chase, like, 
they're just gonna lose the fight. If they're scared of the soldier, they can't do anything and we're gonna win the fight. So we're actually, like, we have numerical advantage right now, we have advantage. Let's just play to that, let's just get towards our team, to where we can actually have a little bit of defense. And there we go. Because here we just end up completely isolated and killed. One of the best ways to beat um, a nanovisor is just kill the soldier. Like it, it, it's amazing how well it works. Because soldiers tend to just like run stupidly at the enemy. Um, you'd be amazed how how many times you can just kill an enemy soldier seventy six when he ults. They think they're immortal. They're not. They just have very very reliable damage. Basically, rocket's good. We get the recall. It's fine. Good trade. A little bit of pressure onto the pharmacy. A little bit of pressure onto the tracer. Like, once the pharmacy is beaten back, so we do a good job here when we sort of get to uh, this point. Like, we just we shell out the Farah. Farah has to go, and then we can change target. We swap onto the tracer. Reload pharmacy. Still not re like coming back into it slowly, but Farah is like in a position where she can't really shoot at us. I'm going to put a bit of pressure on the Mercy. Okay, Mercy's pressure back. These guys are gone. Now we can just switch back to the Tracer very quickly. Just help out a little bit with that. Okay, now Farah's back. Let's talk about... Uh, actually, dealing with the Reinhardt's fine here, I'd say. Every ultimate under the sun gets used there. We're in perfect position to just clean up. I'm glad to see that we're focusing the Farah. Now, the sound barrier was fucking beautiful. Their re-engage is superb at the moment. We are dead. Although the enemy team's having a very hard time sort of cleaning up. Like, this... This was an interesting fight. Um, so basically, uh, judging from what I can see, their Reinhardt panics. We panic a little bit as well. If that rocket landed, that would have been huge, just to kill the Reinhardt. We are absolutely correct in swapping target to the Farah. Just to kill it as quickly as possible. Could have done with a couple of headshots there, but something to work on. Um, the Mercy Res is great from them. Instantly sound barrier. Our Farah tries to go for a very greedy ultimate. Doesn't pay off, but we stay on the Farah. It's fine. Not honestly okay doing that. And the second we end up in this doorway, we're dead. And then the enemy team just fails to kill anyone, it feels like. Like, this this is very strange to me that the enemy team doesn't just start cleaning up. We get one. Zarya, do not press Q. Do not press Q right now. Honestly, your team should have just died already. Okay, that's another greedy eye shadow from their team. It's a good counter eye shadow, I think, from your team as well. And the pressure just keeps on mounting. This, like, this is the difference to me between, like, a pro match and a, a pleb match. And as a pleb myself, like, it's it's very frustrating because it makes it very difficult because it, the thing with pros, they're clean, okay? The pros think about things in terms of the fight and they will not drag on a fight unnecessarily. They will often just, like, end up losing it. And I think this team fight was technically lost um, at this moment where the res and the sound barrier both go off. So you've used your sound barrier. Mercy picks up tons of people. They sound barrier, and suddenly you lose one of your main components of DPS, and then the second DPS falls. And at this point, like, your Mercy gets a res, okay, fair enough. Pulse Bomb goes off, doesn't get a kill. Kill trade on both sides, but sol losing Soldier is much worse than losing Hanzo. Why they have a Hanzo, I don't know. Uh, why anyone ever has a Hanzo, I don't know. And you think at this point that their Pharmacy would just be able to just stomp all over your team. Like, that's, that's what's confusing to me, that the pharmacy doesn't just instantly take over. She gets another one, but then it's like, your tanks are still alive, and somehow this Reinhardt isn't dead yet. So then she ends up overextending, we can punish that, their Reinhardt throws out another random ass Earth Shatter, gets most of his team Earth Shattered in the process, and then it flips back. And Mercy gets, like, the second res of this long-ass, weird-ass fight. Both Mercies do. Barrage to counter the graph. We saw yesterday that barrages to counter graph is actually pretty powerful. Okay, this is dicey for us. Be careful. Stop sprinting around, honestly. 
My advice is crouch. Crouch, 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 crouch. Don't, 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 no, 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 no. You've just given the game away. So now you're stuck. Okay, the Reinhardt's peeled for you. Like, fucking hell, that's actually quite nice. Their team all peeled for you, so your team can now take up tons and tons of space and move quite far forward. But in this situation, if this has happened to you, do not engage until you know that your team is in position. Like, this is just greedy as hell. Even if you get this kill, it is much better for them to trade one-to-one. -one because their Pharah will respawn and basically instantly start impacting any fight ha that happens. Well, you have to respawn and then you go do-do-do-do-do-do-do and you spend ages and ages and ages running from spawn to get back. So, ugh, be very careful doing stuff like this. Um, in these situations, it's better to just crouch and just wait, just watch the chevrons of your team. Once your team is in position, then you can just come up behind them. You could just get onto this high ground here and just gun into the back of them, kill a support, kill the mercy, kill something, and that will swing the fight dramatically. What you've tried to do here is suicide. You're lucky that the Reinhardt, in a way, just came and peeled for us. Well, unlucky that we took the rocket, and then the Lucio came in and finished it. If the Reinhardt just peeled for us and we didn't take that rocket and we just managed to sprint out, then it's pull the Reinhardt out of position, and that gives your team a little bit of time and a little bit of space to move into, where you can now sort of go and contest the objective. Lucio somehow dies to a Hanzo. There's literally two enormous-ass barriers, but no, Lucio is up here, thinking he's DSP stanky. And, oh, look, Lucio, what happens to you? Oh, you've caught an arrow in your face. Congratulations, son. In that valiant effort to try and deal 30 damage with your left clicks, you've managed to die. If they have a Hanzo on their team and a Pharmacy, be very careful if you're going to leave a barrier. There is nothing more frustrating. What? Their Reinhardt is just... Uh, their Reinhardt is a special individual. That's a good dragon. It's the Mercy at the very least. Their, their Reinhardt is a very special individual. The Earth Shadow for one person. The Orisa and Godda. Okay, the fight's already... Like, you don't need to Earth Shadow at that point to win. And then let's a counter Earth Shadow through. You don't sound salty about overaggressive Lucio's at all. It's not. It's this. What is a Lucio hoping to achieve at that point? He's not going to kill anyone. No one's low. No one's taking any damage. So all he's doing is throwing a little bit, like a tiny amount of damage into the enemy team at the cost of potentially his own life. There is no planet where that trade-off sounds good, right? If you just spell out the trade-off, okay, Lucio, you can either stand behind the barrier and just shoot into their barrier and maybe get a shot or two past it. Or you can try and do a fancy wall jump, try and get up and over their team, but at the cost, you can probably die. You know, you're going to take damage and you're probably going to die. Um, when you spell it out like that, it's just like, why did you do that? It doesn't make any sense, right? It's so blatantly obvious when you, you just point out the options. Of, well, why not just stay tucked behind safe? If Lucio goes down first in a team fight, the statistics say that you are going to lose like 80% of the time. Lucio is hugely influential on team fights, so him going down is absolutely enormous. We have a sound barrier. The clue here, um, so the tracer gets on us, that's okay. The clue here is when you see this, this is a Lucio deploying sound barrier, so the, there's no point to turn at this point, we can just go straight in. This is just like a very. I don't know, this is sort of my experience speaking, and maybe it's because I'm spectating and it's easier, and like we're panicking a little bit maybe. But you see this and it's like, okay, that's a sound barrier. I can follow this Lucio. Like, I don't have to worry about my health for a little while, I can just run straight in. We, we've... YouTube.com uh, Magic Roundabout theme I mean, congratulations, <laughs> you've, you've used a sound barrier to run in a circle there, friend. I, I, I love this theme, by the way, it's so good. It's so good, and I don't think it's copyright anymore, which is fucking beautiful. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
you you know you fucked up there. I'm pretty confident. Um, at this point, like we're, we're this tracer has done 600 damage to you without firing a shot. Case in point, we have tons of hit points. Running, 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 not doing anything, not contributing. Soldier's having a, a senile moment. He's just running a circle. He thinks he's running marathons again. He's doing laps. He's doing the Captain America thing. He's just running laps around Washington. Um, yeah. That tracer beat you without doing, without firing a shot there. And meanwhile, the far end Hanzo is killing your entire team. Because you let a tracer get into your head. I don't... Don't. Oh, wow. Uh, Jill Boo, just the kind of person you want out of this community. Lovely. And there's no point in getting involved in a chat like this, by the way. It just tilts you. Oh, oh man. Oh, baby. Right, the big thing there was, like, proper delegation of responsibility. And this isn't even something you have to, like, do in a super conscious manner. Uh, this isn't something you have to do in, like, a very... You don't have to really be aware of anything to try and figure out, like, how this is going to work. You don't have to tell the team, Okay, okay, troops, listen up. You have to do this, and you have to do this, and you have to do this. You'd be surprised how often people just start kind of doing this stuff innately um, when you just start doing it yourself. And so it's just a case of like looking at their team lineup and looking at your team lineup and thinking, okay, what's actually handling what here? What's actually managing what? Well, the Orisa is going to be doing a lot of like Orisa's job is mostly going to be suppressing the Reinhardt and probably putting some pressure on the Hanzo. Um, that's pretty much all she's going to be doing. She, Arisa can't do anything about Tracer. She's mostly dealing with the Reinhardt. Your Reinhardt is going to be doing the same. Going to be mostly stopping damage from the Hanzo. Mostly going to be stopping their Reinhardt doing stuff. And your Reinhardt was outplaying theirs pretty consistently. Theirs was throwing. As far as I'm concerned, your Reinhardt was playing sensibly. In terms of who's going to deal with this, like... You just look at the team lineup and you just go, Well, no, 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 no. Well, maybe... Maybe the Mercy can help. No. Like... Arisa can't really deal with pharmacy that well. She can sort of act like a flat cannon and just sort of shoot into the air. She can maybe pull it around a bit and maybe help out in that way. Because if you pull an airborne target into the halt, they're literally going to get pulled into the middle of the halt. So all you got to do, if you see a halt go out and it's connected to a pharmacy, um, just aim dead center on the halt and you'll hit whatever it pulls in. Um, so yeah, you can absolutely sort of work with Arisa, but she's not really going to be doing a major thing. Lucio, pff, it's just going to be a case of spamming at it. John Krat, pff, yeah, right. Um, Mercy can maybe help you with it a little bit, but Mercy's going to be busy healing most of the time. And then Reinhardt's just going to be blocking the damage. So it's like, okay, well, I have to be dealing with this. Like, this is two heroes I'm trying to keep pinned back. That means that if the Tracer is running in the back line, if the Tracer is diving into the back, you're not the one to deal with it. Like, you have a Junkrat to deal with that, as far as I'm concerned. Arisa can maybe help with it as well with a bit of suppression fire, but the Junkrat... Can, Junkrat's superb, but, like, if Tracer's just trying to dive into a team that's very clumped, and your team, like, looking at it... Like, this is a Death Ball team lineup, you know? Especially with the Arisa involved. Um, but I think before... I can't remember what this Arisa was playing earlier. Might have been a Farah, which complicates matters a little bit, but especially the team lineup you have at this second, like, this is death ball as hell. Like, you guys are just going to stand as a clump. Tracer tries to get into it. Well, she, the Junkrat's just going to blow her up. Um, and you just sort of got to let that go and just let that, let Tracer do that. And it feels weird. And it's weird advice because I'm sure you're thinking, well, surely the supports are going to be shouting at me saying, kill the Tracer, kill the Tracer. But the bigger problem is the pharmacy is going to just shit on everyone. If you just give them, like, if you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. And that's how pharmacy sort of works. Um... So it's just sort of keeping that clear and keeping that focused. And to me, like, the biggest example of it is literally at the start of the game. Um, like, every single time you disappear to deal with this tracer, you notice the pharmacy, like, the fire starts off over here, and then we're just going to sort of go forward. If I go to 1.5 times speed... Right, we disappear to go deal with the tracer... We end up in this sort of protracted fight, and you can see instantly the pharmacy have gone on up into a strong position. Like they've just taken a really, really good bit of ground. And then we disappear to deal with the tracer again. 
And like, if Trace is going up here, like, is, is she really a problem? She's just running towards a Symmetra. Like, is, is this Tracer actually an issue at the moment? Not really. Is the pharmacy an issue? Absolutely. fucking lootly. So this Tracer is just basically not doing any active damage, but she's buying a ton of space right now for the pharmacy. And the pharmacy is just going up and over through the middle, and then we end up tracing the Tracer so diligently that we tap Visor next to a moderately charged area and just get focused down and kill. And it's like every single time we get caught up in just trying to deal with this Tracer, you see the pharmacy just completely take over the game. The Widowmaker complicates things, which means we just have to play closer to the Reinhardt. Like, if you think about how the Widowmaker is going to affect your positioning, you can't stand out in the open quite as much. So you're just going to have to hug the Reinhardt a little bit more. Um, and rely on his shields and rely on the payload for cover. And we end up sort of disappearing for this. Bought the Pharmacy. We start getting onto them, but by that time it's too late and there's just three of them back here. But I want to point out... And hit. Symmetra deals with it. Symmetra deals with the Tracer. The Tracer does get the, the telly with a the bomb. There's not much Symmetra can do about that, except really get lucky with a barrier. Um, but yeah. Like, it's the Symmetra that deals with the Tracer. And it's like all that time that we're dealing with the Tracer, no one's really handling this pharmacy. And so it is it is just that, like... it. And this is the thing, not once during this game did anyone say, deal with the Tracer. Not once did anyone sort of call out the Tracer as being a huge issue. Not once did the supports complain that the Tracer was a big problem. Meanwhile, the Pharmacy is just shooting down everything and having having the time of their lives because they're being uncontested. And that's sort of, that's the problem that I notice, is that we sort of self-impose this job of, oh, I have to deal with this and I have to deal with that, but that was never really the case. Okay. Um, that is about it for the coaching session. Um, that hopefully was somewhat useful. We are going to start taking questions from the chat now. I'm going to load up Overwatch. We're going to play a little bit of Overwatch as well uh, soon enough. I'm looking forward to it. So, I'll see you shortly. Start asking questions, guys.